So buying a gaming keyboard can be overwhelming. It's hard to just even go into a store and physically play with one to see which one is even best for you. Well, no worries, guys. I'm here to try and make your keyboard decision a bit easier. Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. It's your boy Kobe, and in this video, I'm going to be breaking down the basics of gaming keyboards and what you should be looking out for before making your final decision. Now, this video is it actually a collaboration with Jim. I've worked with them before in the past, and they actually sent me some of their gaming keyboards, like this one you see here, to check out. So I'm going to be using these to break down what you should be looking for in a gaming keyboard. Now, buying a gaming keyboard might seem simple, but actually it really isn't. There's so much that you need to consider before making a final decision, and it's actually all depending on your use case. Now there are dozens of different styles, sizes, feedback, and even features that it might be a little bit overwhelming to make your final choice. Personally, it took me a little while to find the keyboard that I was looking for, and even now, I still keep my eye open for other kinds of keyboards to see if there is actually anything worthwhile improving on that would make me want to change my keyboard. But honestly, buying a keyboard, or a peripheral for that matter, you have to be sure that you can get something that you know you will be comfortable using for a very long time. It's not like the actual PC itself. You get a gaming PC based on your preference of games and performance, and of course looks. But for a keyboard, while you want something that performs well, you definitely want it to be a comfortable experience, whether it's your keyboard, your mouse, your gaming headset, and considering that the keyboard is one of two main peripherals that you will be hands-on every time, you want to make sure you're comfortable using it. The other peripheral, of course, being the mouse. So I'm going to be breaking down five aspects of a gaming keyboard that you should pay mind to when making your final choice. And that's going to be the kind of keyboards, the size, the switches, connectivity, and the software. Now, of course, there are other things that can make or break your choice of keyboard. But I believe that these five things are one of the most important things that you have to be aware of. So let's get into the first thing that you should be paying mind to when buying a gaming keyboard, and that is the kind of keyboard. So there are two main kinds of keyboards out there. There is a mechanical keyboard and a membrane keyboard. Membrane keyboards are the most common type of keyboard in general PCs, but are a bit harder to find in the gaming space. Now these kind of keyboards feel like those basic cheap plastic keyboards that you would find in an office space. They are quiet with low profile keys. Now gaming membrane keyboards are essentially the same thing. They have the same feel and make very to little noise as well with that mushy feel when you're pressing the keys. They actually don't give you any tactile feedback at all. Benefits to these membrane keyboards are that they are silent in operation and they're usually the lower priced of the two. And some drawbacks to membrane keyboards can be the lack of the feedback and also some durability as they are more prone to issues down the line compared to a mechanical one. Mechanical keyboards are the one that you see gamers use the most. They are the louder, clickier styled keyboards with higher elevated keys and offer more feedback and has longer actuation points, making you press the keys with a little bit more force than membrane keyboards. They have individual mechanisms under the keys known as switches that can be tailor made not just for gamers, but for serious typists as well. Now mechanical keyboards are priced a little bit higher than membrane keyboards, even though you can really find some very nice affordable options like the ones here from Jim. But in return, you do get a better feedback and more options to choose from depending on what you primarily want to use these keyboards for. And now the second aspect of keyboards is the size. Now there are a few different styles to choose from, but I'm only going to mention the three more popular kinds, which are the full size, 10 keyless, and 60%. Now full size keyboards are keyboards with the standard more common layout. They have all the keys including the F key row on the top, while also having the number keypads to the right. 
Most of the time, they might have audio controls and other media controls as well. 10 keyless keyboards are basically what it sounds like, a full-size keyboard without the number pad on the right. Now, this is more common for gamers to use, as most of them won't even be using that number pad, and it also makes for a smaller keyboard size on your desk. 60% keyboards are the ones without the dedicated arrow keys to the right, as well as the F row on top and other missing keys. These are one of the smallest size keyboards on the market and make for a more simple layout for your desk setup. Now, depending on what you primarily do, these sizes can be tailor-made for your personal experience. The third aspect to gaming keyboards are the switches, which are mostly found on mechanical keyboards. There are many kinds of switches that you can choose from, but here I'm only going to focus on the three popular ones that you would probably see the most often, and they are linear, tactile, and clicky. Now linear switches are the simplest form of a mechanical switch because they are the ones where you just press down the key without any feedback or loud noise, kind of. Even though you really won't really hear a noise, it still has that mechanical noise to it. All you do is you press the key and the keyboard registers a click and that's it. You still get the mechanical noise from pressing the key like I said, but it's actually one of the quieter switches out there. Now these are usually recommended for gamers who want a fast response with little to no noise. Tactile switches are basically like linear ones, except there is a small bumpy feel when you press the key. Now that bump is usually halfway between the full press of the key. This can be beneficial for like typists, for example, because they don't need to fully press the key while still getting that bumpy feedback that indicates that you actually registered that key. Gamers can also benefit depending on the kind of games that you can play, but it can be a bit detrimental if you're the twitchy type and accidentally press these keys. Clicky switches are a variation of the tactile switch. You get that bump in the middle of the press, but now you also get a very loud click at that bump. These are one of the loudest switches you can get because every press will get you that click. Now, of course, this is the one that a lot of people would try to strive for, as many would proclaim that this is the true gaming keyboard, but that's an old timer's mindset. As beneficial as it would be to get that audible confirmation of the key press, some might not prefer that loud clicky noise as that can be a distraction or irritating to you and others around you as well but some people do like that full feedback of both the physical bump and that loud noise. So it's all up to you, of course. Now, different brands and companies have their own flavor or color to these kinds of switches. You most likely will hear the, the term Cherry MX, which is the most common manufacturer of keyboard switches. There's also a manufacturer called Gatrion, which makes switches as well. Cherry and Gatrion are one of the most popular and common ones, so you will probably hear those the most. Now, they make the color switches known as red switches, which are linear, brown switches, which are tactile, and blue switches, which are clicky. Now, other companies like Razer and Logitech, among others, have their own names for their switches, so pay mind if you're going to purchase a keyboard. The fourth aspect to a keyboard is connectivity, and this is a simple one. You can get a keyboard in either wireless or in wired. Now wired, of course, is the simple and most common option out there. And a lot of people prefer this way because A, it's the more affordable one, and B, it's the less stressful one. Now why less stressful? Because wireless keyboards usually requires charging at one point and it can be cumbersome to keep charging the devices over time. Wireless keyboards were frowned upon in the gaming community for some time but they have evolved over time to become a great option for those who want a cable-free setup. Response times have become so low that it's actually very hard to distinguish performance between a wired and a wireless keyboard. Now, of course, wireless is the more expensive option out of the two, so keep that in mind. Also, make sure to see what kind of wireless technology the keyboard is using 
because some of these Bluetooth gaming keyboards can still have a very noticeable lag and response time. As dedicated wireless ones with those included dongles do not. And finally, the last thing that you should consider before buying a gaming keyboard is the software. Now why did I include software as a thing that you have to keep in mind of? Well in my experience, gaming keyboards might come with incredible features that you might need to activate in the form of a software that you need to download. Now that sounds good and simple and obvious, but now let's say that you have a gaming keyboard with a dedicated software and now your gaming mouse needs a specific software as well. And now your gaming headset. And now all your other peripherals that you're going to buy later on might need some sort of specific program for it to run it the way that you want it to. Now that can be annoying. And now you're probably going to have at least three different programs running in the background. Now sure, these programs might not take up a lot of PC power. But it is a little bit annoying to have different programs running different things on your computer every single time. My advice is try to stick to peripherals that don't require a specific program to run or stick to a company that has the same program to handle all of the peripherals that you have. My girl, for example, has a ducky keyboard and a glorious mouse which you don't actually need to download a specific program to change the RGB on those peripherals. Me, for example, as well, I have all Razer products. My keyboard, my mouse, and my headset are all controlled by Razer Synapse. Now, I'm not saying that you can't buy a Razer keyboard and a Logitech mouse, for example. You can. Just be aware that you do need two different programs to control them. If that doesn't bother you, then that's fine. But a lot of people don't realize the amount or the kind of programs that you would need to download for your specific peripheral until you have them in your hands. So definitely keep that in mind, guys. And that's pretty much it. Those are my five things that you need to be aware of when buying a gaming keyboard. Now, there are things that I probably missed out on, like the crazy world of custom keyboards. But this is just a guide for those who are starting out and want to know some of the basic things that you need to be aware of when buying a gaming keyboard. Gaming keyboards are so much fun to use, especially the more mechanical options, and they provide a unique experience to both gaming and your everyday use when it comes to typing. Now, it can definitely be confusing and overwhelming when looking to buy one when I threw you guys all this information, but I hope that this simple guide can help you guys make a final decision when purchasing a keyboard. Thank you to Jim for sending these keyboards out to me. They offer two different kinds of sizes, 10 keyless and 60%, and they also offer different Gatreon flavor switches depending on your personal preference. These are great looking and feeling keyboards, and they are priced specifically for the budget gamer. If you want more information on their keyboards, check them out in the description below. Now, if you guys did enjoy this video, make sure to hit like, and also do not forget to hit that subscribe button. Thank you guys all so much for watching and we will see you all in the next one.